What is the best exercise of all time? I'm going to make the case for the kettlebell swing. That's right, my friends. This is an exercise that you may have overlooked, but I'm going to argue why you should include the kettlebell swing into your regular exercise routine. In this brief video, I'm going to explain the benefits of the kettlebell swing, benefits that you will absolutely be interested in, how to perform a kettlebell swing properly so you can work out with intensity without going to Snap City, and I'm going to provide you with an awesome, powerful kettlebell swing workout that you can start using right away. My name is Pat Flynn, let's get started. So the kettlebell swing has an enormous range of benefits. It has been called by legendary strength coach Dan John, the fat burning athlete builder. It burns an enormous amount of calories. It builds that delicious kettle booty. It strengthens the back. It helps to fix and correct posture. And it has what has been described as the what the hell effect. The what the hell effect is when people start performing the kettlebell swing, they suddenly start noticing improvements in other areas of their life that they just would not have expected. Their pull-ups go up, their deadlift goes up, their hip pain goes away. And they go, what the hell is this? Well. Who knows? It's just the sort of magic of the kettlebell swing. It just really seems to help and improve everything generally, but it is especially efficacious if you're looking to just burn more calories in less time, develop power, strength, and lean muscle. It's also a pretty profound love maker. Yes, indeed, the kettlebell swing is how I met your mom. Not your mom, dear viewer, but your mom. If my kids are watching, it was literally with the kettlebell swing in the gym, how I met your mom. So that's a pretty cool benefit. I can't promise that that will accrue to everyone, but it accrued to me, so it's worth mentioning. Okay, so how do you perform a kettlebell swing. There are really a few essential components that you have to absolutely get right to get the most out of this exercise and to ensure that you're performing it safely. The first thing you should do is you should set up properly. With the kettlebell swing, you want to place the kettlebell about a foot in front of you. You want to hinge at the hips. And when you hinge at the hips, you want to think about reaching your butt back as if you're trying to hit the wall behind you. When it comes to a proper hinge, the hips should be above the knees, but below the shoulders. This is different than a squat where your butt is more going down and will be both below your knees and your shoulders. The hips are loaded in the hinge. And one of the big benefits of the kettlebell swing is it teaches you force production. It teaches you how to generate power with your hips. This makes it a really big game changer for athletes. And indeed, it was through martial arts that I was first introduced to the kettlebell swing. And it was, in fact, a game changer for me. So once you're hinging at the hips, you want to place two hands on the kettlebell and you want to start your kettlebell swing with a strong hike pass. Now here you want to make sure that your back is flat. You should have a straight line from the back of your head down through the tailbone. You should suck in a nice deep breath of air deep into your belly on the backswing. And then what you want to do is you just want to jump through your heels, snap the hips forward and come into a tall standing plank. Very tight at the top, abs are braced, glutes are braced, release a bit of air but not all of your air at the top and then repeat the movement. The kettlebell swing should really be about chest height but there's a range of acceptability here. For most people, anywhere above your hips but below your eyebrows is a good range for the kettlebell to float for the kettlebell swing. A few other points to keep in mind. Remember with the kettlebell swing that this is a hip dominant explosive movement. The power comes from the hips. The arms are really just the cables connecting you to the kettlebell. So think of your hips as the engine and the arms as the steering wheel. You also wanna be aggressive with a downswing. Don't just let gravity do the work. Actively throw that kettlebell back into your hips and imagine you're playing chicken with your zipper. I know it's a scary cue, but it's really effective. You wanna move your hips out of the way at the last second. So that way you're catching the load with your hips, not your low back or shoulders, and then you can explode right into the next rep. Just do a set of 10 kettlebell swings like this, and I promise you will become immediately aware of how awesome and intense this exercise is. You do not need a lot of reps if you're doing the kettlebell swing correctly to really feel this movement and to get a lot out of it. Okay, so what is a good beginner kettlebell swing routine? Well, there's lots, but let me give you one of my favorite routines starting out. This is called the old school lead-in. This is actually something that my bare knuckle boxing coach used to have us do before every training session. And it involves three simple exercises and you don't need any other equipment aside from the kettlebell and maybe a jump rope if you wanna use that. So you're going to start with 30 seconds of kettlebell swings, two hand kettlebell swings, get as many powerful reps in as you can in 30 seconds. That's actually a pretty long set. So you'll be fairly gassed at the end of 30 seconds. If that's a bit too much, then just start with 15 seconds. But if you're well conditioned, try to push for the full 30 seconds. After that, you're going to hit a plank for 30 seconds as well. And this is a really cool combination because the kettlebell swing is going to have your heart rate jacked, you're gonna be huffing and puffing, and you have to get into a plank, into this tight clinch position. You have to learn to control your posture and your breathing and stay tight and keep those abs nice and hard. After 30 seconds of plank, you're going to stand back up and you're going to perform some sort of active recovery for 60 seconds. I recommend jumping rope. If you don't have a jump rope, then just skip in place. This should be, again, a form of light active recovery. And then you're going to repeat this routine for five rounds and try to do it all in one go. Don't add any extra rest except for what you're getting from the active recovery. That's called the old school lead-in. It is an awesome total body conditioning exercise. You can do it frequently and you can vary the kettlebell swing with each routine. So sometimes you can do two hand swings, other times you can perform single arm swings. Be sure to watch one of my videos for the proper technique for that. 
There's also variations like the start stop swing, also called the power swing. So there's lots of ways that you can cook the kettlebell swing, but for the purposes of this video, I'm really interested in imparting the basics because as they say, mastery is not moving further away from the basics, but deeper into them. So when you're performing the swing, remember it's all about power, being explosive, exploding that weight up, driving those hips forward and giving as much as you can to every single rep. My name is Pat Flynn. Drop a comment below if you're already using the kettlebell swing. I would love to hear what sort of benefits have you seen from this exercise? How have you been transformed by using the kettlebell swing in your own routine? And what ways are you currently training with the kettlebell swing? Leave a comment, I would love to hear it below. Just we'll one more it. thing, my little piggies. If you're ready to move ahead in your kettlebell training, you want something a little bit more intense and advanced, check out my free 101 kettlebell workouts guide. This is chock full of high intensity kettlebell complexes, combos, circuits, and chains. Oh my, to help you burn more calories in less time. Link is below, it's totally free.